All right. Hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And our good friend Floyd from Vinecraft was in with some wines from the, uh, well, one from Burgundy, uh, some from the Northern Rhone. Some of the best values you find in all of France coming from the Rhone Valley. And the Northern Rhone, for me, Croesus Hermitage, one of the best values. You can find stuff under $30, 20 to 30 that is really excellent quality, like these wines from Francois Villard. And we started out with a little uh, Mekon, Priest Le Clos, which uh, this is from Domaine de Valange, and it's a father and son operation based in St. Baron. They own about 50 hectare, hectares in the Mekon. Everything's grown organically. This wine's very clean and crisp and bright green apple and lemon citrus fruit, kind of notes of wet stone and pretty floral notes. Really fresh and clean on the palate. This wine's got some nice minerality. And on the second day, even showing lovely concentration of fruits. And, uh, you know, nice uh, finish, short, but, I mean, this is what we expect from the Macon. A very good little wine at $17.25. Then Francis Villa Condru, the Terrasses du Parat. And uh, the ter- this is a, from a terrace a hillside vineyard. Three different parcels of very old vines. Condru is 100% Viognier. Really rich peach and lychee nut fruit, some hibiscus flowers. A touch of white pepper spice here. They only make 5,000 bottles, under 5,000 cases, uh, 500 cases. Good amount of that juicy peach and lychee nut fruit showing on the tongue. A lovely creaminess here. Some lovely perfume floral notes on the finish along with that white pepper spice. And just a slight oily texture. Sometimes Viognier's can be a little too rich and a little bit too over the top with their texture for me. But this wine, really lovely balance. An excellent example of Condru. And then Francis Vellard's Saint Joseph Poivre Sol, uh, which this means salt and pepper. Probably didn't pronounce it right. Uh, salt and soil, rather, I'm sorry. And uh, this is for all purchased fruit, 18 months in old oak. It's the largest production wine that they do there, 20,000 bottles, still not a big production. And uh, very ripe, uh, early, uh, this 2011 vintage, very ripe, very uh, showing its stuff very early on, and uh, really lovely savory nature to this wine. It's showing fresh earth, some dark plum and soy espresso, a little animal notes, really lights on the palate. Um, showing that little slaty, a little salty mineral note, uh, very short but pleasant. Leaves the food, the tongue salivating for food. Uh, very good little wine at uh, thirty-seven fifty, maybe a little expensive, especially considering these Croesus Hermitages coming up next from David Reno, the Georges Reno Cuvée, named after his grandfather, certified organic and biodynamic and this one's got a lovely amount of black cherry black plum fruit dark peppery spice flesh fresh earth really exotic bouquet some savage 50 percent goes into barrels here but they're six years old bought from his friend etienne salze in burgundy that they also use concrete eggs something that's becoming a lot more popular and a really lovely kind of a smoky note coming in this wine also uh black cherry and plum fruit on the tongue with a nice savory edge that black pepper spice uh and herb showing along with floral notes on the finish and a hint of that animal nuance really bright and fresh acidity though in this wine leaving the tongue salivating for food excellent juice at 33 bucks and then the david reno croesus hermitage le croix and uh the terroir here is clay and lime soil everything on the right is granite over in coronas and uh it's about twenty thousand bottles of this cuvee made a hundred percent syrah both of these wines you can't add some white varietals in to croesus hermitage roussana marsan i believe but uh lovely dark plum and black spices on the nose some wild flower and black pepper as well here dark fruit showing on the tongue with fine tans with that minerality showing through here along with black spice light and smoky uh, notes also but wonderful freshness seems to be a signature of these wines excellent juice again at 39 dollars and then the cornas the rebel and uh, granites is what you get here and you really notice the minerality in these wines from cornas only 2100 bottles produced spends 24 months uh, in oak and 18 is actually the mi- minimum by law, so he goes above the law. And uh, and then the Etienne Sauzy also provides him old barrels for this, which, I mean, maybe they're a little more expensive and the grains is a little tighter. I don't know, but old barrels really uh, doesn't matter who they came from. Once they get old, they're old. But uh, anyways, I guess he's good friends with Etienne. This wine's got some a lovely bouquet here of uh, dried herbs, some dark plum and black spice. You get that distinct minerality that is Coronas from that granite soils. Very substantial on the palate. This wine getting even bigger on the second day. And uh, you can just tell it needs some time. This 2010, a classic vintage for Coronas. Uh, that lovely black licorice spice showing in here as well. Most excellent juice at sixty-seven fifty, that's what we had to drink with our friends from Vinecraft. I'm your host Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying, "Remember, always drink the good stuff first.